Welcome to this lesson on the binomial theorem. Before we talk about the binomial theorem, well, we want to know what exactly is a binomial expression. These are examples of binomial expressions. Okay? Now, to be a binomial expression, well, basically, there are only two terms inside the bracket. Alright? The term binomial, alright, by simply means two. Alright, just a bicycle has two wheels, a bipod has two legs, and so on and so forth. Okay, so any expression like this, this is called a binomial expression. So what does the binomial theorem do? Well, the binomial theorem is basically a formula to expand binomial expansions like this. Now, you should be pretty familiar with a binomial expansion like this one. Okay, now you should have learned how to expand this uh, in your basic algebra expansion. Alright, so how do you expand this? this let us just uh, recap on uh, what you should know. Okay, so a plus b bracket square, it simply means a plus b multiplied by a plus b, isn't it? So, how do we expand this? Well, we, we take a multiplied by a, and that's how we get our a square. We take the a, then multiply by the b, and that's how we get a a b. And of course, um, right here we have a b multiplied by a, and that's how we get another a b. So, um, the lastly, we have our b multiplied by b, and that's how we get the b square. Okay, so this is uh, why it becomes um, a square plus two ab plus b square. All right now, this is a very basic binomial expansion. Okay, so basically you already know how to expand binomial expansion. The only trouble is. How are we going to uh, very quickly expand binomial expansions, say, raised to the power of 10, or raised to the power of 7, or maybe 19, or 100? How are we going to do that? If we are going to do this uh, expansion using the rainbow method, some, some teachers call it the rainbow method, okay? Uh, if you're going to use it uh, to expand it this way, uh, obviously, you know that to, to you, you sense trouble when you have to expand to the power of 10, isn't it? I mean, you have 10 brackets and you're going to endless. Okay, you have to do your working endlessly. So, there must be a better way out, and the key lies in the binomial theorem. Now, before we move on to the binomial theorem, I think we should spend a little bit of time to talk about the Pascal triangle. So, just what is the Pascal triangle? Well, a Pascal's triangle is basically an area of numbers, okay, that has got, of course, something to do with um, the binomial theorem, okay, but it is a very fascinating um, series of numbers that we'll, we'll talk about uh, later on. Alright, first of all, let us take a look at some basic binomial expansions, okay? Now, just now we talk about square right a plus b square and then you know you do the rainbow method you expand it out and you get a square plus 2ab plus b square all right now if you do the same meaning to say well you know after expansion you have your a square plus 2ab plus b square okay and you multiply again by another a plus b which means that well you're going to do the same rainbow uh, thing again, right? You're going to take your a square multiply by a and, and so on and so forth. You're going to expand everything. Now you will get a cubed plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cubed. Okay, now if you were to go on doing it for uh, you know the next term and so on and so forth for the next power, you, you will get this term. Okay, now the way I arrange it here is to show you that there's a certain pattern that uh, we can actually derive here and that is what the Pascal triangle is all about. Now, if we were to write down the coefficients of all these expansions of all these terms right into uh, the number form like this, so in this case we have 1a and 1b and therefore it's 1, 1 and in this case we have 1a square 2ab and 1b square and that's how we get 1 2 1 and of course uh, to the third level we have um, 1 3 3 1 and that's how we get 1 3 3 1 1 4 6 4 1 1 4 6 4 1 and so on and so forth okay now when we write down the coefficients of all these terms into this format okay which is of course in the form of a triangle this is what the Pascal triangle looks like 
okay now and why is it so fascinating so just what exactly is the pattern okay now some of you who may be you know good at very good at number rec number pattern recognition and so on you may start to see hey you know there's this very interesting pattern going on I mean the most obvious would be what the first is always a one the last term is always a one I mean it starts with one and with one start with one and with one and so on and so forth now but what goes on is this how do we get the two well it's basically this one plus this one we give you a two here and how do we get the three well it's basically this one plus this two will give me a three this two plus this one will give me a three okay and this kind of uh, addition relationship goes on and on okay and that's how you construct this Pascal triangle which simply means to go to say that well the next level if you want to think about it okay you want to work it out it's actually quite simple we have one of course we start with one and with one um, one plus four the middle number here this will be a five okay and of course this will be a ten and here there'll be another ten here there'll be another five and lastly ends with a five now what does this one five ten ten five one um, then tells us well basically this this one five ten ten five one will then obviously be the coefficient of the expansion for a plus b raised to the power of five right so if you go on with your Pascal triangle okay obviously you can work out the expansion for um, to the power of 10 the binomial expansion for the power of 10 to the power of 11 and so on and so forth isn't it now the of course that would be a very tedious thing to do so to rely on the Pascal's triangle to do our binomial expansion is obviously very inefficient so why are we learning the Pascal triangle then well because the Pascal triangle is a very very interesting array of numbers now not only okay the numbers inside this triangle can help us find the coefficients of our binomial expansions okay it also has got a lot of little little secrets okay number series hidden inside the this triangle one of the most famous series of numbers in the world the Fibonacci numbers okay or some call it the Fibonacci series alright it is also hidden inside this triangle alright the triangle numbers yes the triangle numbers is also inside this series of numbers and not only that this Pascal's triangle has got hidden series of numbers inside it okay it has got practical uses also all right for uh, in the study of combinatorics which is actually the permutation and combination chapters that are uh, used to be in the syllables okay uh, which is very closely related to um, the study of probabilities all right and so on so actually there are a lot more okay so I urge you to um, go find out more on your own about the Pascal triangle one of the more um, interesting thing about Pascal triangle is its origin there's this very interesting debate that um, the Pascal triangle is actually not discovered by Pascal okay it's actually discovered by a Chinese rather than um, rather than the Western uh, mathematician right so as fascinating as this Pascal triangle is okay we are just only concerned about the its application and its relevance to the binomial theorem 